China is currently developing the Type 003 aircraft carrier, the country's third aircraft carrier and the largest outside of the US Navy. The Type 003 will probably be commissioned either in 2024 or 2025, which would allow two to three years for fitting out and sea trials. What we do know so far about the ship is based on open source intelligence, such as satellite images. The Type 003 is expected to displace more than 85,000 tons, slightly less than a US Navy supercarrier. It is basically confirmed to be conventionally powered and appears to have three aircraft catapults and two elevators. Lastly, it is expected to use electromagnetic catapults for launching fixed-wing aircraft. This video explains the benefits of using catapults-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery for the Type 003 aircraft carrier. This system of aircraft operation is referred to as CATOBAR for short. We also look at the advantages of using electromagnetic catapults over the primary alternative, the time-tested steam catapult. Let's begin by explaining how an electromagnetic catapult work in practice. Our information is based on the catapults of the US Navy's Ford-class carriers. The basic idea is to use electrical currents to generate magnetic forces that propel a carriage carrying the aircraft along a track, such that the aircraft achieves the required speed for a takeoff. The track is divided into a large number of segments, each of which can be energized to create an electromagnetic force. The segments along the track are selectively switched on and off so that they generate an attractive magnetic force directly in front of the carriage and a repulsive magnetic force directly behind the carriage. At no point are all the segments activated at the same time. Instead, only those segments near the moving carriage are energized, creating the effect of a magnetic wave. Basically, after hooking up to the carriage, the aircraft is electromagnetically pushed and pulled down the catapult until airborne. The electromagnetic catapult on the Ford class can launch an aircraft every 45 seconds, including 3 seconds for the actual launch and 42 seconds of downtime. Each aircraft launch requires a massive amount of energy which is drawn from an energy storage device. This energy storage device is recharged from the carrier's own power sources. So the first question for us is, why launch aircraft with catapults? The Chinese Navy's two active aircraft carriers, the Liaoning and the Shandong, use a ski jump for launching aircraft. This system is called STOBA for short, which stands for Short Takeoff But Arrested Recovery. The STOBA system has the advantage of being cheaper to build and operate than a catapult system. It also does not require additional equipment, so can save a lot of space. However, the disadvantage is that for the same amount of thrust generated by the aircraft, the maximum takeoff weight launched by a stowbar is lower than a catobar and is also less consistent. The maximum weight that a stowbar can launch depends heavily on the speed of the carrier, the strength and direction of the wind, and the length of the runway. The J-15 carrier fighters can in fact take off with a maximum payload of weapons and fuel from the current Stobar carriers, but only under ideal conditions. We have covered this in a previous video which is in the description if you're interested. The Catobar system, or catapult assisted takeoff, is more consistent in terms of the top weight that can be launched. It is less dependent on the speed of the carrier, 
the position on the carrier from which the aircraft is launched, and the weather conditions at the time, and therefore provides a lot more flexibility to carrier operations. The Chinese Navy has developed a catapult-compatible version of the J-15, and this aircraft should be able to launch from the Type 003 aircraft carrier with a full payload of weapons and fuel consistently. In principle, Catobar should be more reliable, reducing the probability of accidents. Aircraft catapults allow for a heavier takeoff weight, which allows a more diverse air wing in terms of the range of aircraft available. This can include rather heavy aircraft that currently cannot generate enough thrust to take off from a ski jump, such as the KJ-600 early warning and control aircraft, which is in development. The two Stobar carriers use a modified Z-18F helicopter as their airborne early warning unit, but their speed, flight endurance and range are far less than a proper fixed-wing aircraft. The ability to field the KJ-600 carrier airborne early warning aircraft should greatly improve the combat effectiveness of the Type 003 aircraft carrier. The Type 003 should also be able to field the J-35, a fifth-generation carrier fighter that is in development. The J-35 meets the new norms of stealthy aircraft design, with carefully aligned angles and blended surfaces. It is also equipped with an advanced ASAR fire control radar. It features an internal weapons bay to carry most of its air-to-air -air missiles, including the PL-15 Beyond Visual Range missiles. Concealing the missiles inside the weapon bay serves to reduce the radar cross-section. The J-35 should be a far more capable combat aircraft than the J-15, and will make for a far more powerful air wing. That being said, the J-35 is expected to be lighter than the J-15, and should be able to operate on the two Stobar carriers as well. In fact, because the J-35 is smaller, it should allow the Stobar carriers to have a larger air wing than is possible with the J-15s. By the way, if you like what you're seeing so far, please do consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already. So we have seen that aircraft catapults lead to considerable advantages for the Type 003 carrier compared to the two Stobart carriers. But the Chinese Navy could have chosen a steam catapult instead. Why choose the electromagnetic catapult, which is a new and somewhat untested technology, instead of the steam catapult, which has been used by the US Navy since the 1950s? Well, the electromagnetic catapult actually has several important advantages. It can launch aircraft of a wider range of weight than a steam catapult. The steam catapults on the Nimitz-class carriers are designed to launch a maximum takeoff weight of about 80,000 pounds, or 40 tons. This basically covers all the carrier-capable aircrafts in service. However, an electromagnetic catapult actually has a greater maximum launch weight at 45 tons. This means that using the electromagnetic catapult provides the Chinese Navy with the flexibility of fielding very heavy carrier-based aircraft in the future. For example, long-range bombers, a capability that steam catapults are less able to provide. At the other extreme, the electromagnetic catapult can launch aircraft that are much lighter than what is possible with the steam one. The steam catapult actually cannot launch aircraft that are too light without excessively straining the airframe. In contrast, the electromagnetic catapult can launch very light aircraft, for example the small UAVs 
that's way less than one ton, something that the steam catapults cannot do. The electromagnetic catapult can also achieve a higher sortie rate. According to the US Navy, a Ford class carrier can launch 160 sorties every 12 hours, while the Nimitz class carrier with its steam catapult can achieve 120 sorties. This means an increase in the sortie efficiency of 33% once you go from steam to electromagnetic, which is a huge advantage in a combat situation. There is also an advantage in terms of reducing the wear and tear on the carrier aircraft that are sustained from using the catapult. The steam catapults launch the aircraft in a sudden jerk from 0 to 275 km per hour in just 2 seconds. This puts heavy stress on the aircraft frame, which reduces service life and increases maintenance cost. In contrast, a launch by electromagnetic catapult can be adjusted by a computer to be a more gradual increase in speed. This reduces the amount of stress put on the airframe compared to a steam launch. For similar reasons, the electromagnetic catapult should be able to reduce the probability of accidents during takeoff. Over time, these advantages should translate into increased service life for the carrier aircraft, lower maintenance cost, and greater safety for the pilot. The electromagnetic catapult also has an advantage in terms of space and weight requirement. The steam catapult requires many pieces of large equipment, including a much bigger desalination plant to purify the water than otherwise needed. It also uses a lot of fresh water, which is a precious commodity and takes away from what would otherwise be available for the crew. In contrast, the electromagnetic system does not require nearly as much equipment, which saves plenty of space. Space is a premium on an aircraft carrier because it directly translates to the capacity to carry aircraft. Lastly, the electromagnetic catapult is easier to maintain. The steam catapult is high maintenance, as the usage of steam results in corrosion of metal. Many techniques are employed to keep the corrosion to a minimum, but still, corrosion takes place. Steam is obviously very hot. The steam catapult equipment also makes a lot of noise. Both of these issues make the life of sailors more difficult. In contrast, the operational cost of the electromagnetic catapult is much reduced owing to lower maintenance requirements. In conclusion, the key points are as follows. The use of an aircraft catapult on the Type 003 aircraft carrier provides major benefits over the ski jumps on the existing Stovar carriers. This includes the capability to launch the upgraded J-15s with a full payload consistently, and also the option to field heavier aircraft, like the KJ-600 early warning system. Secondly, the choice of an electromagnetic catapult has many advantages over the steam catapult. This includes the option to launch slightly heavier or even much lighter aircraft. The sortie rate is also increased, and each aircraft launch puts less stress on the airframes, which increases their service life. The new catapult technology is also less intensive in terms of space and maintenance requirements. All told, the electromagnetic catapult on board the Type 003 aircraft carrier is a major increase in China's naval aviation capability.